Hey everybody, it's your old pal Wood Doofus here. Updating kitchens can be really expensive, so one of the cheaper options is always just to give your kitchen a facelift. And one of the parts of a facelift is just upgrading the doors on your cabinetry. If your cabinets are in good shape, you can keep them, but maybe you don't like the way they look. So that's where this option comes into place. A friend of mine has a kitchen that was built circa 1962 out of nothing but plywood as far as the cabinets go. And these doors right here had some old hardware on them that you can see they were a little dated. The color's ugly and it just needs a facelift. So I have about 28 doors here that I have to work with. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off these lips, add some hardwood around the edges. I'm gonna plane down to get all the old 1960s shellac off there. Then I am going to add a shaker style border on the front. And then we will update the hardware and the hinges and really bring these doors into the 21st century Flash Gordon style. A lot of the steps of this project is going to be pretty tedious simply because the doors are all different sizes. Basically I have a half inch lip that I want to cut off of all the doors and I want to add some poplar frame around there to make it look like a solid piece of wood. Right now I just have to keep setting my blade to the point where it cuts off that half an inch on all these different sized doors. One thing I should point out is that I'm only going to cut off the lips with the table saw on the long dimension, meaning pushing them through this way. When I need to cut off the lip on the short dimension, I don't really want to configure my table saw to push that through. You could do it with a good miter gauge, but I don't trust the miter gauge on this simple table saw. So one option I have to cut this dimension, I could do it on the miter saw, or if it won't fit on the miter saw, I could do it with a, with a straight edge and a circular saw. It's always good to wear a mask when you're cutting wood so you don't breathe in the dust, but especially if you're cutting wood from the 1960s because you don't know what kind of poisonous bullcrap is on this stuff. All right, so all the lips are cut off of these doors, and I went ahead and ran every door that will fit through my planer, which is over there. It's a very dusty operation. It gets all that 60-year-old uh, lacquer or whatever is on there off of there in an easy way. The only other option I would have would be to sand it, but all of these were less than 12 inches wide, so I was able to put them through the planer. Save myself a lot of elbow grease. I did have about eight doors that were too wide for the planer, so with those I did have to get out the old orbital sander, and for this I used a 100 grit uh, sandpaper disc, which worked out pretty well. I wanted to use 80, but I didn't have any, so I used 100, and I liked the way it worked. I use some of this shelf liner when I do my sanding, and that way it doesn't want to uh, vibrate or slide around too much. It's very useful. I'll put a link in the description if you want some. As you can see here, I just cut up one eight foot one by six of poplar, and this is to replace the material on all the doors that I cut off. So this half inch poplar is gonna serve two purposes. One of which is to cover up the end grain of the plywood, which is never attractive, and that will work nicely for that. And of course, the other thing is to replace the to replace the material that I cut off when I cut those lips off. And these are gonna, these doors will function differently than they did originally, and this will compensate for that different function. To attach the poplar, I'm just using a little bit of wood glue here. Smooth it out with my finger. Just gonna tack it on with my 18 gauge brad nailer. Should be able to, should be able just to use three brads on this. Now once the glue dries, everything will be strong. So I got all the poplar edges on all the doors and you might see that some of the edges don't have it and that's because I only put the poplar where I cut off those lips earlier. The next step is to cut out and glue the strips that form the shaker style look. I just bought a 4x8 sheet of this maybe quarter inch material. I guess this is called underlayment used for other things, but I'm going to use it for this. 
Once I cut it into manageable sizes, I then proceed to cut it into these two inch strips that are gonna end up on the door. So these are the first two I got done. Let me show you my glue up process. So the glue up basically works like this. I'm using Type Bond 2 as my wood glue, which is important, but the uh, thing about wood glue is it takes at least 20 minutes to set and maybe two hours to get to dry properly. So I am going to also use some Star Bond adhesive and this is like super glue and I'm going to add it on the middle part here. I'm going to use some accelerator that's going to get that star bond to dry in roughly 30 seconds. The benefit of that obviously is that once that star bond dries after 30 seconds then it's going to have that clamped while the wood glue dries and then I'll have a strong bond over time. If I didn't use the star bond, I would need a million of these alligator clamps. But the problem with that is, even if I had a million of them, that uh, once you try to clamp it with these things with regular wood glue, you're going to find that it just wants to slide around and it's hard to get good contact. All right, so I skipped filming the most annoying part. Basically, I had to take each one of these doors and I had to fill the nail holes and any voids with wood filler. And then I had to spend a lot of time sanding all the rough edges, all the frayed corners, and make sure I soften up the corners and edges and anything like that. After all that time, my hand is still vibrating from that orbital sander, so it was a major suckathon. The sprayer that I'm using to paint these doors is the Wagner Control Pro 130. It's a really good system. It's really good for DIY stuff. I use this thing to stain my entire deck and it worked pretty well. The really nice thing about this is it does not require plugging into an air compressor or anything like that. You just plug it right into an outlet or an extension cord because the cord here isn't very long and then you're good to start spraying. So check out the description for the link if you want to buy one of these things. So all the doors have been primed. I use the Kills water-based primer. Uh, some people say that oil-based will work better, but uh, it's really stinky and it doesn't and you have to use mineral spirits or something like that to clean it off. So I opted for the easier option, which is just use the water-based. So priming is important for a lot of reasons, but especially if you're dealing with these old doors like I was from the 1960s with an old stain and an old finish on it, you might get this yellow stuff that wants to bleed through your paint. And that's why priming is important, because if you had gone straight to paint, then this would have come up and looked really ugly in your kitchen. All right, so the next step that we got to do is drill the holes for the soft close hinges. So this jig comes with the 35 millimeter Forstner bit uh, already pre-installed. I'm sure you could uh, switch it out if you need it if this one got dull i'll put a link in the description to this jig also in case you want to get one. Oh, this forstner bit is a 35 millimeter which is about the same thing as a one and three eighths i got these soft close hinges on amazon also in a batch of 60 they were less than 80 dollars if you get these at home depot they'll be like 10 dollars a piece so go ahead and buy them in bulk unless you only need one or two I do need to point out something about these hinges if you're in the market for buying them. You need to be able to know what your overlay is, whether what you need or what you want. Basically, the overlay is how far the edge of the door is going to go over the face frame, and that's going to defer on your project. So make sure you look into that, do your research, and buy the right size hinges for what you're doing. I forgot one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and caulk this seam so it looks nice and pretty. I'm gonna take this little round over. Make it look pretty. All right, so I guess that'll wrap it up for this video. We were able to change this ugly old 1960s style door into a more modern shaker style door. It still needs to be painted so it'll look better than this eventually. Please do me a favor and check out the description. Check out the links to those products that I mentioned in the video. Even if you don't buy anything it does me a favor when you do that and help support the channel. Otherwise thanks for watching and as always don't be afraid to be a doofus.